Hey everyone, it's Shiloh Carosa, author of The Exile and The Misadventures of Melvin the Missing Sock, and today I am finishing the second video in a two-part series that I've done on the two different routes of publishing, self-publishing and traditional publishing. If you haven't seen my video on self-publishing, I did that last time, I highly recommend you go ahead and watch that one either before or after this one so you can compare and contrast the pros and cons of both options. Because what I'm really trying to do with this video series is give you a sense of what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of both routes. And the goal of this is just to give you an idea of what's the best route for you and your book. Let me begin by saying that it is incredibly difficult to get published in the traditional market. And I do want to debunk a bit of a myth. I addressed this in the other video too. And that is the myth that traditionally published books are the only good ones out there. That every self-published book is no good. It shouldn't even be on the bookshelves. That's just simply not true. And I think if you really dig down and look at the different books that you'll see published by authors themselves, versus some of the traditional publishers, you'll see that it's not always the case that one is better than the other. Certainly there are a lot of self-published authors out there who have not done their best work. The books aren't as good in some cases, but that's also the case for some traditionally published authors. A lot of it does come down to who you know in this market, and so just know that if you are not able to get your book published traditionally, it is not necessarily a reflection on the actual quality of your book. That being said, there definitely is value in getting your book published traditionally if you can. And I wanna cover a few things that it boils down to in order to make that happen. A lot of your ability to nail down a publisher or even just nail down an agent depends on four things. And number one would be your ability to follow a formula. What I mean by that is anytime you are submitting your work to a publisher or an agent, you're gonna be sending them what you call a query letter, which is basically where you are laying out your book saying in a very succinct form, um, here's who I am, here's basically the premise of my book, here's why it's gonna sell, and here's the value that I'm offering with this. There's a specific way to do this, and I can't get into this right now, but I highly recommend if you are looking at traditional publishing to look up sample query, query letters, you'll see what I mean by there's a very, very organized formula you need to follow. That being said, however, you need to be able to do this while still sounding unique. And that is the second part that your ability to land traditional publishing depends on, is your ability to sound unique. What I mean by that is if you're following a formula, there is the danger of sounding mechanical. It could sound in your query letter like you have just copied and pasted a sample query letter, which is really not the best way to land a publishing deal. So you want to make sure that your materials you submit do have a creative flair to them without going overboard because otherwise you do risk the, the chance of annoying the agent or publisher. The third component in your ability to get a traditional publishing deal comes down to who you know. This is just true in any industry. It's always going to help if you have someone on the inside. There are authors who just get discovered organically. It does happen. Um, most of the authors I know who are published traditionally, that's not their story. So if you want to land that traditional publishing deal, you really want to be thinking about who do I have in my own network of contacts that could connect me with someone on the inside. It always helps, never hurts. And then lastly, you are going to need to create a detailed marketing plan. A marketing plan is basically where you are telling the publisher how you are going to make sure that book sells. Remember, publishers are out to make money, so they're not gonna agree to a book that they don't think is gonna sell. However, publishers are less and less offering marketing services to their authors. So a lot of authors, they land a publishing deal, but they are expected to be the ones going out and promoting their books. And what publishers like to see is that you've already thought that process through. You've thought through a social media campaign, you've thought about book signing tours, giveaways, all that good stuff. Um, you really want to develop as detailed of a marketing plan as possible, and there's a lot of resources out there to do it. Um, but that's really going to help you in making a good impression on a publisher. Now with all of that, that's a lot to keep track of. And let me just say there is a reason why self-publishing is booming right now. Actually, between the years of 2017 and 2018, 
self-published titles rose from about 1.2 million to almost 1.7 million. That was a huge leap within just one year. And that's the most recent report. We don't know what the numbers are yet for 2021. So that's still going to come out. By the way, that was released by Bowker, which is the organization that basically has a monopoly on all the ISBNs. So they're keeping track of how many books are being published traditionally, how many are being published by authors individually, and the self-publishing market is really booming right now. Just because it's booming though, doesn't mean that that is necessarily the best route for you. So let's get into some of the advantages and disadvantages of actually pursuing a traditional publisher. The first advantage is pretty obvious. You get the prestige of the brand of that publisher. And a lot of this could just be an ego trip. I mean, it is really, really nice for an author to have their name on the same book as like Macmillan or HarperCollins, which kudos to you if you can land a deal like that. That is awesome. And that can open a lot of doors. A lot of bookstores are interested in carrying titles that are published by these main publishers. That's, that's a huge selling point if you can get that on your book. The second pro is pretty obvious. Um, you're not paying anything to get your book published traditionally. At least you shouldn't be. And if you are, it's because they're scamming you. No self-respecting traditional publisher is going to ask you to pay them money. If they are, don't do it. It's a fraud. I know, I actually dealt with one of them one time. So not having to pay for an illustrator or a printer or an interior formatter, that saves you a ton of money. That means that you are not going in the hole whatsoever if a traditional publisher is taking on your book. It means that they have had the confidence in your book to assume all of the overhead costs and to basically say, okay, you're only gonna, you're only gonna make money from here. You don't have to break even, you're just making the royalties. Another huge benefit of traditional publishing is that you are working with a highly experienced team. You will have people reading your book over, giving final edit suggestions, in some cases, even reshaping the narrative, which could be, you know, maybe that's something you do or don't wanna do. Um, but if you really just wanna get it in print and you wanna have it with that traditional name, then working with a team that's going to get it all touched up and ready for market, that can be a huge bonus, gives you a lot of experience, and you're gonna learn a lot by working with them. It also ensures that someone else is going to see the final product before it goes to market. So if you're in the self-publishing route, you basically are the one who makes the call when it's good enough. And that can be good, but if you're a first timer and you're still learning, there's a chance that something will slip through the cracks. Having an experienced team on your side does help guarantee that by the time that thing is out and being sold, it's in as good shape as it could be. And it saves you time. You don't have to do as much research. You do a lot of back and forth with your publisher, but you are not the one spearheading the entire publishing effort. Traditional publishing though does come with a few cons, just like traditional publishing though does come with a few cons. So here's what I wanna get into next. The first con is that nowadays authors are largely expected to be the ones marketing their book. Back in the day, I don't know how many decades ago it was, but back in the day, traditional publishers would be the ones promoting your book, making sure it got press, making sure that it got into bookstores, all that good stuff. That is now going to fall very heavily on your shoulders as the author. So you're kind of doing a lot of the work that you would be doing if you were self-publishing. The thing is that you're saving yourself a lot of the headache prior to the publishing, but you're still carrying that burden of promoting your book, getting it into bookstores, um, arranging your book signings, all that. So just be aware there is a lot of work you'll still have to do. Another con is that you're only going to keep a percentage of the profits. Now, it, this is two sides of the same coin because if a traditional publisher takes your book, they're bearing all the overhead costs. You're not paying a cent up front. But if your book does really well, with a traditional deal, you're only going to get a percentage. You're going to get a royalty. And you will maybe not make as much as you could have had you self-published and then you'd be able to keep all of the profits that came in. It wouldn't just be a percentage. So it is that gamble. If you think your book is going to do really, really well, then maybe consider self-publishing because you can keep the profits. But again, a lot of it depends on whether or not you're able to get it into bookstores, which is something that a traditional name can help you with. So it is a bit of a gamble with that. 
the last con is that you do lose a bit of the ownership. Um, I mean, it goes without saying that when someone else's name is on your book, they're going to have their say in how the final product looks. They're going to make sure that it looks exactly the way they want it to in order to sell in the market. And again, I talk about this a bit in my video on self-publishing, so I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but if autonomy and having things a certain way is extremely important to you, that is a freedom you're going to lose in the traditional publishing. So it might be worth it to pursue, but again, it depends on whether that's a hill you want to die on. I do want to give you a caveat here. You probably know this already, but all of my books so far have been self-published. So I don't want you to think that I have done both of these and know them both inside out. There's a lot of information that I have not included here. Number one, because I don't have the experience of doing both of them. And number two, I haven't done all the research out there. I mean, there's so many resources. I encourage you to look into both routes for yourself. That being said, I have spoken with authors who have been published traditionally, and I did do a fair amount of research when I was seeking to publish traditionally. So I'm not coming out of nowhere here, but just be aware that it's best to do your own research on top of this and just make sure that as you're moving your book toward publication, you're bearing in mind the full picture and you're making the best strategic decision for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you again for watching. Go ahead, check out that video on self-publishing. You'll be very glad you did. It gives a fuller picture. I encourage you to subscribe. Um, stay tuned for more and I will talk to you soon.